The views expressed on this show do not represent those of NTV or its staff. Welcome, honorable members, to this session of the NTV People's Parliament, seated here in Toro District at the White House. Agnes Nandutu, the Speaker of the People's Parliament, presides. We would like to express our gratitude to the district leadership for letting us use this magnificent chamber. And Madam Speaker, bridal gifts have been a traditional culture practice for centuries upheld by many communities in Uganda. Traditionally, bridal gifts were to bring two families together to unite them through the love of two young people. There was no price tag attached to it, but today, Madam Speaker, bride price is demanded and fiercely negotiated. This has reduced women to being property, caused cause domestic violence and homelessness. It is against this program, therefore, Madam Speaker, that I suggest we discuss the topic of bride price. Those in favor, I to the contrary, no? Aye. Eyes have it. You are welcome to NTV People's Parliament sitting here in Tororo District at the White House discussing another very important topic of pride price. Or I can call it dowry. I know it is uh, practiced in very many communities around the country and also around the world. But is it still valuable to the families? Has it brought domestic violence among the families? Those are the things that we are going to discuss here in Tororo. Honorable members, let's get the ball rolling. But before we do that, I would like to get the background of Pride Price in this region from a very experienced citizen. Please take the podium, honorable member. Uh, it started way back in 1950 when the traditional culture, cultural tribes of the then Bukedi, the Basamia, the Banyole, the Badama, the Bateso, the Baguere, agreed and formulated the then dist Bukedi district bride price by law. This was in 1950. It provided for five cows, five goats, if you wanted to marry a woman. And it also provided that uh, upon dissolution of the marriage, you'd, you'd, get, you'd be refunded the bride price. Uh, this even, very, if I, even after bringing wealth to the family? Yeah, even after bringing various wealth, including human about beings. about 15 children in the family? <laughs> including children, including all other forms of wealth. You would still be refunded the bride price, as long as the wife left. Now, this very bylaw was reviewed in 1964. But then when it came to 2009, as a district council, we saw it outdated, irrelevant, for many reasons. Uh, we found that uh, Bukedi district no longer exists. We had been changed to Tororo district. And uh, we then undertook to, to repeal this, this, this bylaw and we formulated an ordinance. And uh, we, we did go through the processes, consultations, various cultural organizations, religious, the general public, views were gathered, recommendations. Uh, put up publication done in the Gazette, objections in, called for, debated, passed into an ordinance and signed for implementation, ascended to by the district chairperson, and I have a copy here. But I want to add on briefly that uh, the, why did we go into the review or uh, repeal? The reason was that uh, the very bylaw promoted domestic violence, and the testimonies will be given by the, the officers here present, those in charge of the Family Protection Unit, the MIFOMI, Probation Office, and others, even LCs, and we are all aware about this, that it brought about a lot of domestic violence, it brought, resulted into death, poverty, embarrassment. Madam, Madam Speaker, Sometimes, if you failed to pay, to pay the, the bride price and your wife happens to die, they would demand that you pay upon the death. You would, they would hold the body even for a week, not until you have paid the, the bride price. Is that still happening up to date? No. Yes. Yes. And may we have somebody speaker. from 
the organization Mifumi, what do you do, who are you, and what have you done about this ordinance? Thank you, uh, Madam Speaker, all protocol observed. Uh, my name is Lea Erienyu, and I represent the people of Mifumi. <laughs> and uh, as the pre-current speaker already mentioned, uh, this ordinance was passed in 2010 on the background of several issues that came up. And, more, and, and that presented in the form of cases of domestic violence that re were reported at Mifumi Advice Centers. More than 60% of those cases had domestic, uh, rather, had a bride price as triggers to them. And what were some of these issues that we were seeing? Uh, there were issues over equality, because men felt that once they paid for a woman, that person became their property. So once you have that imbalance in power in a, in a marriage, in a home, then a man is not likely to listen to his wife. A wife does not have any decision-making power. And so there, we have domestic violence. And then he mentioned issues of, of refund, where um, a woman's dignity is compromised because her family feels that uh, she was taken without being paid for fully. And so now that she's, she's actually going, they really need to come and pay for her. Uh, we had a case in Nagongera of a very young couple, 18-year-olds. These are people that uh, the girl actually got pregnant while she was still in school. And as she, was, uh, she died during childbirth. But the family was so callous, so inhumane, that they decided to take away the child from the father and told the boy that we cannot bury your girlfriend until you've paid bride price. Now, imagine, this is a situation, this is an 18-year-old boy who's in school. He's been bereaved. He's heartbroken. And at that moment, you're asking for bride price. Now, I need to mention that these issues were not pushed by Mifumi or any organizations. These are things that actually came from the people. This ordinance was pushed by the people. A referendum was held in 2001, and a question was posed, should, br should bride price be made a non-refundable gift, not demanded by the people, such that somebody says, you know what, I really appreciate your daughter, I think she's very well behaved. When those meetings are held, and somebody says, I want 100 cows for my daughter, the daughter has no say, yeah? It's only a conference of men. So if a, a woman is already being silenced before she goes into her marriage, how is she going to be able to say anything when she gets into that marriage? So the people of Tororo spoke up. 60% of them said, yes, let's make this a non-refundable gift. 60% of 60%. those. 60%. 40% said no. Yes. Is so that those right? Those were men. People of Butaleja, who are the neighboring district, heard about what Tororo had done and okay. were so impressed that they passed an ordinance of their own okay. last year. Thank you. We know some of us who have been in quiet polygamous families, how some of our mothers suffered. That she's called, actually, uh, she's in a marriage that she's not enjoying, but because probably the parents cannot refund, uh, there's so many cows that were paid She's forced to be in that marriage, you know, by force, kind of. And I, I personally I witnessed where somebody was tied to a dead body, just in Buyemba here. And they tied the fella with ropes. The relatives of this lady, she had children, some were actually in secondary. They were grieving for their dead mother, and yet their father was on Kando, yeah? And these people had the clubs. Until the uncle to this young man, he was young in his 30s, was forced to sell land at a throwaway price to have at least some three cows. When was that? That was about two years ago. Now, what happens, not two years before the, the ordinance was passed, okay. sometimes some few years before the ordinance. Even the three cows were brought with five goats in Buyemba in Cairo. And still, the, the parents of the girl we're insisting that we want five cows and five goats until certain neighbors had to give in. Some people were contributing a goat or something like that. I find that to be really primitive. So you I think this ordinance has really the made ordi some... The ordinance has helped way. because yeah. today, if I have not paid dowry, um, you cannot really take me a hostage of that nature. Police will come in because there is an existing law that can help save me. But there was no law. There are four people who were just at the mercy okay. of the relatives. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Honorable Member.
Yes, honorable member, you have the floor. About pride price. Thank you very much, madam. Me, I wouldn't love to talk much. Because first and foremost, what we are discussing, I think we are not in order. It was ruled by the Constitutional Court that the issue of abolishing bright pride is against the what? Violates the Constitution of Uganda. And any law passed that violates the Constitution of Uganda yes. is null and void. Somebody wants this to give information. Member. This is a bylaw. Honorable member. Two. Honorable member. Yes. Please, can you let her to give information to the House? I uh, would. Please, give information to the House. I would, I would like to inform the pre-current uh. speaker that the Constitutional Court made no such pronouncement. Because Mifumi took the, uh, the case to court based on domestic violence and saying that domestic violence, uh, uh, rather bribe price causes domestic violence, the court did not rule in our favor. But that case is still on appeal. But the court did declare that demand for refund of bride price is actually unconstitutional as is supported by the Toro Bridal Gifts Ordinance. Thank you. Thank Have you, you now got the right information, Honorable Member? Uh, uh, Proceed in one minute and make your point, please. Okay. Madam Honorable Speaker, right from the inception of this uh, bylaw, I've always been on the opposite side. <laughs> and I have to inform you that not a, a real, proper, pure Tororian girl will accept and be accepted in a family if the parents are not what? Eh, given something. Do you ask for a refund if at all your daughter uh, left the home? If My would daughter? You, if would you re demand for a refund? I want to inform you. Hmm. Eh? Yes. I have two daughters marrying now, now. <laughs> the first thing they told me, if you don't want our dowry to be paid, we are not your daughter. If you don't want, in case, eh, I, I, I introduced this issue of this bill, I showed them. They said no. That can't be. If oh. I am mishandled there, hey, you will refund. Yes. So you support the issue of refunding? That you? one is there. Do you support it? I support it. Thank you. Yeah. Thank because you. Because that is a bond to the marriage. Thank you. Yeah. That is his opinion and he's entitled to his right. opinion. Yes, Muzei, you have the floor. Uh, thank you very much, Madam Speaker. Uh, first of all, I stand here as a a district councillor from Mokuju, representing Mokuju in Toro local government. Actually, we seem to be discussing on a, a topic which is actually dying. And it is dying because of education. People yes. are already getting educated. That's the reason you want to register so, the challenges and how far we have gone and whether we are moving in the right direction. My, my, in my view here, I am only informing them to, that... Uh, the, the issue of the bride price, as if he's actually dying, it is now resorting to the token of appreciation. Yes. Thank you, Honourable, for that contribution. Honourable Minister, you wanted to give some opinion on this. We do not want to resurrect the issue of bride price, but we are looking at how the ordinance has helped this region come to this level. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker, I think I was part, I've been part of the council, of this district council initially, and of course now as a member of parliament. But as mentioned earlier, we've seen so many of our mothers living in abusive marriages, and they could not go back to their homes just because their fathers had already either sold or used up the cows that were paid when they were still young. You can imagine a woman, 70 years or 60 years, you've given birth to nine children in a home, and then the man has married another woman and is telling you to go back. But go back and I want my cows. Now go back where? After making me look the way I am. <laughs> hmm? So we really need to appreciate that gifts can be a necessity. But it should not mean that because my father paid or received the bride price, 
Now, when I'm leaving that marriage, for whatever reason, that should be refunded. There is no price that you can put on my head yes. as a human being. A woman or a girl cannot be property. And this is what was happening before. Yes. When, when there was no school fees for the boy, child, the next thing they were looking at, if there were no cows or land to sell, is the girl. And when you move down to the communities, it's not only the girls who are going to get married at a tender age, but also parents pushing them to get married because they wanted to get whatever gift they can get. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, may I have the chairman speak, please? Thank you, Madam Speaker. In three minutes, please. Madam Speaker, first of all, this ordinance is operational in the district. Secondly, we consulted all the people in the district. Thirdly, with the due respect, all councillors by then, they accepted only Honorable Orisa. Even during the campaign, his campaign as a district chairperson, his main agenda was that one. But also is by is that, that the reason you failed the election? <laughs> Come and because <laughs> you so agitate for the pride price, you are agitating for, for no, the refund madam, of pride price. I is that the reason you failed the uh, election? Is no, Madam Speaker, I can tell you when we go down, I, I get the overwhelming vote on that ground. This ordinance has not taken off on the ground, practically, you go down. Okay, yeah. thank we, you. We are here educated people only who are but, talking. But, but you the failed the election is because of no. that. No. Okay, ah, thank you. I didn't fail. <laughs> I was cheated. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you. Go the ahead. The papers but of the LOC series were used for voting. Okay, you have the floor. Thank you. <laughs> Madam Speaker and Honorable Members, Yes. this particular point contributed a lot to Honorable, Honorable Rizal's failing. However, our point of justification, one, mm. As other members have stated, women here were real slavery. Go to the market, buy, after you throw them away. Two, poverty. It had also created a lot of poverty. One, immediately a boy buy, marries a woman. The father comes. Then you find they've given him two acres of land. He gets one and a half acres and sells to go and buy a woman. Then this woman comes and produces ten children, and then they grow in total poverty minus land because they use the land for buying their mother. Thank you, Chairman. You are still watching NTV. People's Parliament seated here at the White House in Toro District discussing Pride Price. And you have heard the people of Tororo, they are saying no to Pride Price. You can only give a gift to parents, but should not demand for a fund. Let's go for a short break. And when we come back, we shall get more bets from the people of Tororo. you are still watching NTV People's Parliament debating a very important issue in the country. Yes, Honorable Member, you have the floor. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for this section. In fact, we have been finding it difficult when this is happening. Because when you are paid bright price, your parents in the law can treat you like a donkey. You are not supposed to say anything bad, or anything bad, you are not supposed to say no. But now, as this was passed, we, are, we have also our rights to, to elaborate for what we don't want. Like us, Bateso, we are supposed to be married those days with the 12 cows. But now, they also accept even one cow, but with the Samu gifts. Thank you okay. very much. Thank you. So, the women of Tororo support the ordinance. And the men of Tororo, of course, you have the floor. Thank you, Madam Speaker and everybody in the house. I'm called Beto Sapat, coming from Yolwa Sub County. I'm an agriculturist by profession, and I want to speak from the point of the, Rio commu the rural community uh, whom I represent. I work as a rural extension worker down there in the community. I want to say that the ordinance of domestic violence that was passed here has helped to a very small extent and to just a section of the people. Uh, that is to say the educated community 
But down in the rural areas in the, where the, most of the people there, most of the girls and boys are not educated or they are lowly educated, this ordinance has not helped at all. So at they this still point, force, uh, excuse me, do those people at the grassroots in the real rural areas still force men to pay dowry? They still, even the girls themselves demand to be paid, the dowry to be paid for. They feel without the payment of the dowry, they have no say at the home. Hmm? They really demand. You feel a, a girl saying, unless you pay my dowry, I cannot stay in this home. They demand for, the, for that bride price. Hmm? Dowry. Are you from the, you are a councillor representing where? So which information are you giving? I want somebody from the... Rural, yes, okay. Madam Speaker, I am well informed and that's the reason why I come to the podium. Mm -hmm. Allow me to express this feeling that uh, it is true that there, there is a small percentage still with this kind of thinking, but the highest percentage has really come off this kind of, you know, bride price. Thank you for that information. M Madam yes. Speaker, allow me just wind up. Yes. I want to respond to the precurrent speaker that the small percentage is talking about. I would request that if Mifum has a, a, a statistic to give, I'm sure they're the ones who have been working on this thing. They could really reveal that the largest percentage still are demanding for bride price. That is very true. And I want to t say that even the parents themselves, some parents of these uneducated the daughters and boys who are also not educated are up to now selling their children for bride price. It happened recently in my neighborhood. I'm still investigating. A girl has disappeared. We don't know where that girl has gone. But there's a rumor saying that she has been sold off for marriage. Okay, thank you. Thank you. So what are, what are you doing to those grassroots movement? Are you taking sensitization down on the ground? You can take your seat on it. Th thank you. Thank you, Madam Speaker. You know, issues about bride price are issues about attitudes and behavior. Now you can imagine this is a practice that our grandfathers, that our great-grandfathers practiced. It takes generations for people to weed out that sort of thinking from people. But that is something that we're challenging head on. We have, we have continuous community outreaches, you know, where we go and talk to the communities and try to educate them not to value themselves, not okay. to see their value. Thank and, you. And, and just, just you an cannot addition. give information to, show, to information. to show how much we are actually succeeding. We have young children, we have young girls from the schools in which we work who actually come out and tell us, I think we've seen a situation of child marriage mm -hmm. and an issue of bride price here. How can we help? Okay, thank so you. Shows. Thank you, honorable member. Yes, we, the border is roaring. The border is roaring. But let's get the statistics from the. Uh, uh, family protection unit of, of police. These are the people who can tell us the truth. They can tell us the, the, the cases that are being registered at the police. As for now, after the implementation of this ordinance, what is the situation at the police units? Uh, thank you, Madam Speaker. I'm Honorable Nambala Sofi, the Regional Child and Family Protection Officer, Bukhed. Uh Madam Speaker, about bride price, the time I came to Tororo, it was an issue. But as time goes on, as, as we have moved on, the ordinance has helped us a lot. <laughs> we used to receive cases, actually, if you go to the statistics, the past years, Tororo was leading in domestic violence. Because of bride price. Because of bride price. Today, we have lesser cases reported because of the ordinance. And this has, only, uh, has also been because of the sensitization to the communities about the dangers, the effects of demanding for bride price. Not only this, but even school dropout has been on the increase. Child marriages mention a few. But because of the ordinance, I want to inform the House that these cases have gone low. It is very unfortunate. Do you move down to the grassroots in the villages? Yes, Madam Speaker. We do this. We do this with even councillors, the district gender-based officers, gender officers, the CDOs, actually. 
we do this. It is only that uh, community's attitude towards domestic violence is what is also bringing problems. That okay. communities still have that attitude of looking at a woman, like she put it, as a property. And to the educated ones, when it happens to them, that's when you will see alarm. Eh? People making noise about domestic violence, gender-based violence, and the bride price. I want really to challenge the persons who came to the podium here and said that uh, a referendum was carried in 2001. The referendum was possibly carried, but not in the entire district. I do recall very well that this became uh, a cultural kind of issue in Tororo. The people of Tororo County rejected this referendum, and the referendum was not extended to Toro County. I think if anybody can challenge me, I have no problem. Can anybody challenge you? Who are in charge of referendum? Is this propaganda or people are taking the truth that you did not take the referendum to the people? Madam, the referendum, it was during the election and they selected key two areas. Some few areas in West Brahma, like Krewa and Toro Municipality in Western Division. And all the voting, over 60%, they agreed that we go. How can you call that one a referendum of the district? But, but Madam, Madam Speaker, Madam Speaker, let me add. Order, order, honorable members, order. So, Madam Speaker, after that was the initiation, then we came, we moved in every sub counties. Many councillors moved, we moved to all every sub counties. And we came back to the council for the first time. Only Honorable Risa, who opposed it out of 40 councillors. Okay, thank you. I would beg that the, 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 the provisions of this ordinance, if well articulated down there, the, these violences and the rest would completely diminish. But whereas I appreciate the ordinance, Madam Speaker, the issue here you are aware that the referendum was not carried out effectively. And this is one of the challenges we have. Unfortunately, I was not there in this council, but then. Those people who were in charge of referendum, I think you have had the feelings of the people. So this is the problem we are faced with, that the referendum was not carried in some parts of this district. And these are the challenges we have today. You leaders shouldn't defend this, but please, we should put things right. The other issue about Mifumi, I am aware of this Mifumi, that there are buildings opposite main hospital here. Housing women, <laughs> housing women, because the issue here is that uh, Speak to the people, please. you have a problem with their wife, Mufumi comes in and picks the wife, leaves you with, <laughs> leaves you with your children in the village and their housing woman here in town. This is the problem we are facing with Mufumi. Uh, Mufumi, why are you hiding people's wives in there? <laughs> Why are you hiding people's wives here? Thank, thank you. Um, thank you so much, Madam Speaker. What the precurrent speaker is describing is what we call a refuge. Now, the statistics that show that it's a women's refuge. Give so, her opportunity women, to speak, please. Women, women are at most risk. Women are at most risk of being killed when they decide to leave a relationship. That is when, because you know she's taking the power back, and so then the man feels threatened. So the reason why we have those refuges is to give these women a place Refuge. of solace. After As their cases are being resolved, it's not a place thank you. where they're being taken away from their thank children. Thank you, Honorable Member. So you people are threatening no, your this, wives. This is not right, Madam Speaker. The issue here, why should you house my woman here in town and don't come and play a role of mediating us? The problem is that they house women here and they forget about the children and husband at home. So where do you put the men? The problem is about women fighting for but their the rights. But the information is that you're beating them, no, you're threatening them. So is that the gazetted area for them to house women? <laughs> is the district aware of this thing? Okay, thank you. May uh, I have somebody from police? Somebody from police wants to. Mm.
Yes. Thank you. Thank you, Madam order, Speaker. Order on all members. I know we are debating a Thank very Thank you, Madam Speaker. Actually, what the, uh, the honorable member is referring to is a gazetted place for victims of violence. It is official and they help. It is a temporal custody for victims who have gone through violence. And the police After is aware it, about police it. Police is aware of it. <laughs> After, it, Madam Speaker, I beg to be protected. Protected. After inquiries have been done and exhausted, the victim is willing to go back to the husband, is accompanied together with the area LOCs, and is resettled back with the husband. So, Mifumi is we playing a very good uh, job. <laughs> Uh, okay, you have the floor. Madam, Madam Speaker. Those men who are beating your wives, please, if you mistreat them, they will go to Mfimi refugee camp. Go uh, ahead. <laughs> Madam Speaker, I would, I would like to appreciate yes. the police and Mifumi. The information they are giving is to some extent true. Yes. But they are looking it one way. I have evidences, Madam Sophie here, I've been with her. There are also women who batter men, and the police is not talking about it. They are not giving there are, it. Uh, <laughs> there are cases where women batter men, then they come and report to police, but when police investigates the case, they instead get that it is the woman who is the holding the floor. In that Honorable member, did you go to her after some torture from your wife? Or? Uh, Madam Speaker, these cases happen in the community and we are community leaders. So when this, some of the cases, it is us, the leaders, who refer to police. The police you have had, the women are also torturing men. And in film you have had, you should also give refuge to men who are being threatened. Let's go for a short break. And when we come back, we shall look at a way forward. Welcome back. You are still watching NTV People's Parliament sitting here in Tororo, honorable members. How should we move on those people who still go against the ordinance, like honorable member? Things went wrong at referendum time. No proper sensitization was carried out. Therefore, to be called a Tororo ordinance, the Holy Tororo should be sensitized properly up to the grassroots and then fresh referendum is carried out. Including yourself should be sensitized. I will be, uh, me, I have done it. From the gender office. With or without a referendum, consultations we are made because by the time you're passing an ordinance, there are different stages that you have passed to, to get to that level. So communities are involved at different levels and really enough consultations and amendments are made before you come up with a final law as an ordinance. Then the other thing I wanted to probably talk about is that, yes, we are, like, we are already having challenges. I want members to agree with me that since the, the passing of this law, there has been it has been an eye-opener. There has been a lot of change. Hmm? We want to accept that, yes, we still have people who are resistant, and those are some of the challenges that we have. We have people who are really resistant. Mr. Orisa there talked about, you said we don't mention names, but the Honorable there talked about even the bride themselves who are going to be married off. Some of them will agree with the issue of bride price because... There is a certain value to which they hold to it. And that is how the culture has always been looking at it, that the more cows you get, you know, it, car it used to carry a lot of prestige. But little did we know that it was later going to backfire and come with a lot of challenges. So even the parents themselves and the community, we have some cultural leaders who are still very resistant to this issue of the bridal gifts. We really need to go down there and enforce this law. All we right. also have structures within the community that we can use to help us be able to enforce this law. The LC1 systems and so on. So Since we have that document now, I will only urge you, the leaders who are elected from the grassroots, like the councillors, also to help the audience and educate the people they represent from where? From their localities. Then, 
desensitization, police should also go down to the villages and desensitize the what? The Wanainchi. But as much as I didn't want to obstruct my officer here, I've never seen any police convening a meeting of such a nature <laughs> issue in my area. So that one, I want to advise her that this time, let her make sure that uh, the information reaches the locals down to the ground. Okay. I am not in supportive of saying that uh, I want the bright price to be given to me. I, my person, have my daughters whom I have given out to those ones who want them. Yeah? But I have, I have told my to the microphone, I have told my Bako that you dress my daughter to look decent, it will be okay. As long as she comes with the sugar at my place, I don't need anything. <laughs> in our localities, we used to have a word in our language that Dako Dian, meaning someone given to you because of cows or because of a cow. Uh, most people who are here are going to agree with me that that thing has totally ceased. We no longer have it. Why? Formally, when you butter someone's daughter, for the person to leave, you'll say, I took my five and I want the whole five. But now, that one is gone. I want so to... what do you think should be happening to people who still do not respect the ordinance? No, those who, those who don't respect it, you see, you can try to, you can preach in a church, Madam Speaker, but out of many who clap hands, you will find one who is like this, who is not clapping. We shall try to change, but yeah, of course enforcement will come, but some of them will say no. But the other thing that maybe we, we can do, since we have police in the team that is helping us to change the, the, the whole thing, let police take the side of it where they're supposed to take. Okay. The other, other thing that I wanted to say, Madam Speaker, too, still in our localities, when someone... Honorable member came here and I heard when he was saying that, uh, that in our localities the, 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 the best or the, the, the good number of benef benefactors or beneficiaries are the educated people. The uneducated and the poor people are the highest numbers of beneficiaries. Why? In our localities, the people who are in position to, 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 to pay back the bride price are the rich people. The, po the poor people totally cannot. Okay. My advice or my suggestion yes. to, how, to, to our local people, I don't want this thing of politicking honorable members coming to say who are not told. If they did not come to your sub-county, didn't you listen to the radio? Fortunate enough, they were using all the languages. The way forward is to popularize the message. Popularize the message how there should be more consultations. Okay. And if the law has been rushed and enacted, it was like the referendum of Uganda that was rushed and enacted, but it was challenged. There is no law that cannot be amended. Cannot okay, be thank improved. you, Honorable Member. You have given so, your forward. There should you. be sensitization. Should be Please, uh, you have the floor. Uh, thank you, Madam Speaker. By name is Paul Mugalo, the Deputy Mayor Toro. Madam Speaker, I appreciate and personally benefited from this law. One, with experience, I lost a, a sister and my family personally were, were demanding for a, a, a dowry. But I stood on my ground basing on this law. I said this will not happen to my sister. And I bear uh, a, a witness that uh, I appreciated and benefited out of the law. So as the Torarians, let's embrace it. That's number one. Uh, uh, Madam Speaker, I also know that time will rule out this. You know, there are people who believed, but you know, with the time, it will, the attitudes will change. Madam Speaker, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for that brief forward. Please, thank you, thank you so much, floor. Honorable Speaker. Me, I've come to give the way forward. Let us sensitize both men and women on what to do. Let us not, let us not hide behind the Mufumi that you go behind and then you misbehave because I know tomorrow this people will be behind me. We should sensitize all of us so that we know what we're supposed to do. Secondly, yes, they should not pay. They should not, okay, we should, they should pay, but not pay back. But let us not take it for granted that I'm not supposed to, we are not supposed to pay the bride price. After all, I'll marry that person. But put it in your mind that parents, the parents injected a lot of money to educate that person. Yes, after it is, yes, 
but some people take it for, for, for granted that after all, we are not supposed to pay. And after marrying that person, the person just, don't, you don't even consider the parents of, the, of, the, of your wife. Yes, it is, give them the gifts. Continue even after paying the bride price. Continue visiting them. They will eat the cows and everything will be done. And when you divorce, should they, should they, pray, should they give? Of course they shouldn't. Because I'm, I've, I've, it will get when I've produced. Will they put back that child inside my stomach, inside my womb? Of course no. So they shouldn't demand for it. Okay, thank you. I have something small here. Somebody wrote to me and said the biggest... Order, order, honorable members. I'm reading something from some member here that the biggest problem we have with Mifumi is that some of their sub-county representatives or coordinators are women who have failed in marriage. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you have the floor. You have the floor, honorable member. Madam Speaker, I want to agree with my brother from Musukuru that we, the young men of Tororo, we are also going now to marry. <laughs> Another thing is I want to urge the honorable members that if you are elected, but regardless... But you need a gift. Is it's a okay, gift? it's okay. <laughs> regardless of your political party, when you come to the council and there's some audi audience being passed, please don't hide from the electorates. Okay. Wind up, please. From for me, the people who have been, you know, spearheading this. Please. Um, in one minute. Oh yes, all I can say is that I think the support has been evident. Yeah, you've, you've heard of case studies, you've heard of people who have actually benefited from the, the, uh, the ordinance. Although we have some few stray voices, it looks like the people are actually very supportive yes. of this ordinance. So the only thing that we can do is to correct perhaps the things that people don't understand and keep, and you as councillors and us as people that work for civil society organizations, our mandate is to go out and educate people. Okay. So let's just continue doing that. But okay. otherwise, the ordinance is fantastic. Thank you. Please, in half a minute. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Before we came to the challenges, I wanted to uh, uh, pose a question. Well, mm. This is a, a very critical cultural issue. My question was, what role did the cultural institution of Tororo, that is the Buddha, the Japadola and the Mormor, do in passing this role? Okay. And if they did, what steps are they taking in ensuring that this ordinance goes down to the rural community? Okay, thank you. Where you forward have... is, eh. I would encourage that the, the cultural institution emphasize on passing out, on sensitizing the communities on this ordinance. Okay, thank you, Honorable Member. I think you have heard the people of Toronto embrace the ordinance. There is need for more sensitization and there is need to involve cultural leaders. The powers that be, you can work on that. Otherwise, we are grateful that the people of Toronto have passed this ordinance to help. Uh, uh, to help mitigate the domestic violence that is uh, uh, caused by a uh, pride price. What are you doing in other districts? Are you planning to invoke such ordinances to protect your girls and protect your families? Because of time constraints, we cannot continue. I am still Agnes Nandutu, the Speaker of People's Parliament. Until next Saturday, I add you in this house. The views expressed on this show do not represent those of NTV or its staff.